Most people think their Wi-Fi is safe just because it has a password. But let me tell you something, it's really not. If that password is weak and someone knows what they're doing, your network is basically wide open. They can easily break in, steal your bandwidth, spy on your devices, and even launch attacks all from inside your own network. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how Wi-Fi password hacking works step by step. Because if you don't understand how these attacks work, you can't defend against them. All right, before we crack anything, we need to first understand what we're actually going after. Not all Wi-Fi networks are built the same. Some are easy to break into, others are a bit tougher. It all depends on the type of security that the router is using. So before we actually hack into a Wi-Fi network, let's break down the type of Wi-Fi security you'll run into in the real world. First up, we've got WEP. This was the very first wireless security method introduced, but by today's standards, it's weak and outdated. You can think of it like putting a lock on your front door. However, instead of metal, that lock is made out of Lego bricks. This can be cracked in seconds using basic tools. If you see a WEP network today, it's basically free real estate. Second is WPA. This came right after WEP and tried to patch up some of its flaws. It's slightly better, but it still has some well-known vulnerabilities. It's not super common anymore, but if you do run into it, it's definitely easily breakable. Next, we have WPA2. This is the one you'll see most out in the world as the default on most modern routers. It uses stronger encryption and has better overall protection, but there is a catch. It's only really secure if the password is strong. This is where most real world Wi-Fi hacking happens and is what we're mainly gonna be focusing on in this video. Lastly, we have WPA3. This is the newest and most secure option out there. It uses more advanced encryption and has a better key exchange process, which makes the whole handshake capturing process much, much harder. However, there is still a problem because not every device or router supports a WPA3 yet. So while it is still growing, a huge chunk of networks are still stuck on WPA2, and that's what attackers are most commonly targeting. All right, before we start doing anything, we need three things, the right hardware, the right tools, and the right word list. First, for the hardware, you'll need a wireless adapter that supports both monitor mode and packet injection. The monitor mode allows you to listen to all the wireless traffic around you, and the packet injection allows you to send de-authentication signals to other devices. Some built-in Wi-Fi cards support these features, but not all of them do, so you'll need to verify this before getting started. To check if your adapter supports monitor mode, you can run this command here, IW list. This command will list your wireless capabilities. When you run it, you're going to want to look under the supported interface mode section. And if you see the word monitor listed here, it means your adapter can be switched into monitor mode. To test for injection support, you can use a tool called Airplay NG. Run the command Airplay NG dash dash test followed by the wireless interface you have. This command will send out test packets to check if the adapter can inject them into the air and then listens to see if any responses come back. If responses are received, it will say something like injection is working. Once you've got the hardware, the next step is having the right tools. For basic Wi-Fi hacking, we'll be using tools from the Aircrack NG suite. This includes the Aeroduct tool, which is used for scanning and capturing handshakes, the Air Replay tool, which is used for kicking clients off networks, and finally, the Air Crack tool, which is used for cracking passwords offline. Having the right wear and tools, however, is only half the game, because without a solid word list, you're basically shooting in the dark, and a good word list massively boosts your chances of cracking the password. If the password is something like your birthday, it'll be cracked in seconds, because these kinds of easily guessable passwords are in every major word list, and the tools we use today can run millions of guesses per second with the right hardware. Every time a device connects to a WPA2 protected Wi-Fi network, the router and the device perform a quick handshake to authenticate each other and securely agree on encryption keys. And if we can capture that handshake, we can then try to crack it offline using a word list. To see the other wireless traffic around us, we need to switch our wireless adapters mode from managed mode, which is what we normally use, into monitor mode. And to do this, all we have to do is use the Airmon NG tool. So if you run sudo Airmon NG start followed by your wireless adapter name, this command will change your adapter's mode into monitor mode. Keep in mind, if you see any warning about the network manager or any other process interfering, you can always kill them with this command here. sudo Airmon NG 
check kill. This command will prevent packet interference with your Wi-Fi adapter, but it will likely disable your internet until you restart those processes or reboot. After you put your adapter into monitor mode, you can then start scanning the radio waves and see what networks are around you. And to do this, you're going to use the AeroDump NG tool. And if you run AeroDump NG followed by your wireless adapter name, this command will open a live feed of every Wi-Fi network in your range. Here what we're going to be looking for is a WPA2 secured network with ideally at least one client connected to the network. We also need a strong enough signal which can be anything above minus six. Once you've got your eyes on a target, you will want to isolate and monitor just that network to keep the capture file clean. And in this case, we will only focus on this network right here called Juice Shop. So to only monitor this network, we can craft the command to the arrow dump tool. We need to specify the MAC address of the access point, the channel it's running, and finally, we need to write all the packets coming into this network to a file called capture.cap. So the command will look like this, arrow dump ng dash dash bssid, followed by the MAC address of the router or the access point, dash c, followed by the channel this network is on, then dash w, followed by the output file, and finally, we specify the name of the wireless interface. After typing this command, you'll now only see your target's network. And if any clients are already connected to this network, you will now see them under the station section. We will need to keep capturing these packets until we finally grab a handshake out of the air. However, we do have a slight issue. What if no one connects to this network? What if the clients just stay connected or there's no new connection happening? We don't just want to sit and hope for someone to connect, right? We can actually force this process. If there's already a device connected to the network, we can run a de-authentication attack to kick that client off the network. And the moment they reconnect, the handshake will be captured. To do this, we need to open a second terminal window while still keeping this arrow dump terminal open. And in the second terminal, we will use the air replay ng tool to run this command. Air replay ng dash dash de-authentication. And then we will specify the packet numbers we want to send. Afterwards, we specify the MAC address of the access access point with the A flag, and then finally, our wireless interface name. Once you run this command, go back to your arrow dump window, and you'll now see that you might have a message that says something like WPA handshake, followed by the MAC address of the access point. This means that you just captured the handshake, and the capture file we specified earlier will contain all the encrypted handshake data. All right, now that we've got our handshake, now it's time to crack it. What we're going to do is take the capture file that contains the encrypted handshake and feed it into a cracking tool that keeps trying different passwords until one of them matches. And to crack the handshake, we will need to run a command that looks like this. Here, the dash W points to your word list. And in this case, we will use the rock you word list, which has millions of words in it. Finally, we specify the capture file, which is the file where a handshake is saved. When we run this command, aircraft takes each word from the rock you list and encrypts it the same way WPA2 does. Then it compares those results to the captured handshake. If there is a match, it simply means you've got the password and you'll see the phrase key found written in your terminal. In this case, we were actually able to crack it very quickly. As you can see, the password was dragonfly87. The truth about this process is that while it can be fast, it can also be painfully slow. Your success here will depend entirely on your word list. And the better your word list, the better your chances are. So you might be asking yourself, what does all of this actually mean? Well, the truth is that most home and small business networks still rely on WPA2. And this entire process shows just how fragile that could be if the password is weak. If your router or device is supported, one of the smartest things you can do right now is to upgrade to WPA3. Unlike WPA2, WPA3 doesn't use the same four-way handshake system, which means attackers can't just sit back, capture your traffic, and crack it offline. But until WPA3 is everywhere, your best defense is still a strong password. So make sure your password is long, random, and completely unguessable. Avoid names, dates, or anything remotely predictable. Despite what some people may think, Wi-Fi hacking isn't really magic. It's very simple, and anyone with the right tools and patience can pull it off. So now that you've seen exactly how this works, make sure you protect your own network like you expect an attacker to come knocking.